Assalamu alaikum, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Abdul Good. Alim Mubarak performed uh, the Hajj this year for the first time. Now back, volunteering here, again at this masjid, yeah, yeah. or mosque, in Newark, he and finds teaching me. Sunday school is no even more important no to him than before his journey. It broadens your scope as a human being because you find that all human beings are exactly the same. But at the same time, we're different. Hajj, right. Now, what exactly is Hajj? Who can tell me what Hajj is? A pilgrimage. I was sharing with the children but and I'm even with the adults that were there that to instill the enthusiasm for making Hajj. One day, you all will get to make that journey as well. When you make your prostrations anywhere in the world, right. you know you're facing the Kaaba, right? right? But to be right there right. and yeah. you're bowing and you're making right in front of the Kaaba right. itself, that is, a, that is like, it's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, it's awesome. Imagine a crowd a quarter the size of New York City, only more diverse, all trying to do the same thing at the same time in the same place. The common language is Arabic, though not everybody speaks it well. The common goal, the worship of God. <laughs> The world over, Muslims swear, there is no God but the one God. The world over, they face Mecca to pray five times a day. In Mecca is the Kaaba, believed to be the first house of worship for the one God built on earth. The Muslims don't worship the Kaaba. They worship the Lord of the Kaaba. Okay, and it's only a focal point. The Kaaba is in the center of the Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary. Open to the sky, three stories high, it's big enough to hold 750,000 worshippers at once. And if there's no room inside, outside will do. It's huge. It is so imposing. You're dwarfed by it. The huge marble columns, the huge marble minarets, it just dwarfs you. And you feel like this little tiny little ant, you know, walking in this vast expanse. And it empties out into this vast courtyard. And right before you, you see the Kaaba. And it's like, this is it. This is what I've been praying towards. This is it. The first act of the Hajj is to walk around the Kaaba seven times, following the example of the Prophet Muhammad and his ancestor, Abraham who is credited with raising the foundations of this holy house. Before you can walk around the Kaaba, you must enter a state of spiritual purity called ihram. For women, it's a consciousness, an intention to perform hajj. But for men, there's also a special garb. Okay, this is what's called the ihram. And uh, what happens is we, uh, these are two pieces of unstitched cloth. As we put these two pieces of cloth on, and you wear nothing else, no underwear, no perfumes, no colognes, no deodorant, no nothing. There's a psychological vulnerability, I would imagine. Because no. you are exposed. But you also enter into a state of consciousness whereby you don't do any arguing with anybody, no intimate relationships with your wife. Your whole being is geared toward getting close to your Lord. Now the women can pretty much wear whatever they want. Why do men have to wear just the two towels? It equalizes everybody. It's an ego thing. Men, men, have, men have large egos. We have large ambitions. So you don't know whether you're standing next to or talking with a CEO or a president or a beggar. Because in the eyesight of Allah, you're all the same. All the same, except for the culture clash in the hot crush of the crowd. Some folks say, excuse me, some elbow their way through. Did you find yourself able to focus in spite of the crowd, in spite of the heat, in spite of the push? Sure I did, no question. That was very easy. You become so focused, okay, in your worship that you block everything out. After circling the Kaaba comes running seven times between two hills called Safa and Marwa. The density of humanity makes the run more like a trudge. Pilgrims reenact a story found in both the Bible and the Quran. 
Abraham's second wife, Hagar, was left in the desert, desperate for water for their son Ishmael. According to Islamic tradition, God provided the spring of Zemzem, which refreshes Mecca's visitors to this day. It's on then to Mina for the night. En route, they chant, Here I am, O Lord, as Hajis have done for 14 centuries. Mina is a city of tents, many with built-in air conditioning, thanks to the Saudi government. Pilgrims spend the night here preparing for a one-on-one -on -one with God at their next stop, the Valley of Arafat. It's a great equalizer. You know, no Howard Johnsons or Holiday Inns. You know, you're doing, every, everybody's doing the exact same thing. In years gone by, pilgrims trekked to Mecca, to Mina, and on to Arafat by horse, by camel, by foot. Nowadays, they go by bus. Caravans of buses, some 20,000 of them this year, carried pilgrims from place to place. That whole experience for me was purely patience and perseverance. You know, because it stretched my patience past its limit and created new limits. You know, but I had to persevere. Why? Because it was for Allah. The mood is subdued at Arafat. We see trees for the first time in days. Muslim legend has it Adam and Eve met here after they were expelled from Eden. The Prophet Muhammad gave his final sermon on the Mount of Mercy at Arafat. It is said that here, God answers all prayers. Being at Arafat gives Muslims a chance to meet one another. After all, there are people here from every nook and cranny on the earth. This togetherness brings unity to the world's largest gathering of diverse peoples. Oh, Morocco! Yeah, Morocco. Morocco, yeah. that's how they say it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Morocco. Yeah. When we talk amongst ourselves, we talk as human beings. We didn't talk as a Pakistani did to an American or a European talking to an American. We talk as Muslims, as human beings to one another. The issue of race, the issue of ethnicity, the issue of nationalism was non existent. Almost done with the rituals now. All that's left is to stone the devil. Pilgrims act out another episode in Abraham's life. According to the Quran, when God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Ishmael, Satan tried to get him not to. Abraham drove Satan away with stones. We are also stoning the devils in our own lives because we're always tempted by the devil every single moment of our lives, inwardly, outwardly. You feel them raining on your back of your heads, the pebbles? You know, it's really funny. I had a kufi on, right? And it's good to wear a kufi because you felt some coming on your head. Even when I was really concerned, I almost fell back and I almost lost my glasses and I almost stumbled and fell into the crowd. And for a brief moment, you know, I thought, okay, this may be it. <laughs> you know, Allah knows best. Back in Mecca, pilgrims visit the Kaaba one last time, repeating the Tawaf, the circumambulation, and the Sa'i, the search for water walk. 